All content is publicly sourced and used under the USA Fair Use and UK Fair Dealing Guidelines. The things I say are strictly my opinion. Good afternoon, everyone. It's the Busy Bee with the Royalty. It is the 28th of October. Hope you're all having a great Wednesday. If you're tuning in today and you're expecting my usual snarky, witty sense of humor, um, I'm a little bit disappointed, but I don't think it's going to be that great today. Um, if you've noticed, I haven't made a video in a week now, and I'm only coming on here to make this video. I really didn't feel like making this video, but I didn't want you guys to think that Smegs had put a hit out on me and I was in hiding or whatever. That's not the case at all. Um, after today, I, I don't know, it'll probably be a few days or a while before I make another video. I wanted to tell you guys something about me and this isn't something that I've ever said in my videos in the past it's something I've kept very close to myself because I don't like to share too much personal but um just wanted you guys to know I'm you know what's going on with me and why I might not be here for a little bit but um um where do I begin it it started 13 months ago today, the 28th of September of last year, 2019. You know, I can't stand telling the story. I'm going to tell it. Just get through it. <laughs> right? So, it was a Saturday. I woke up that day and, uh, you know, drank my coffee as usual. I usually go to the grocery store on Saturday mornings and do my grocery shopping for the week. That day I had planned to come home and make some homemade lasagna, so... I was excited about that. Um, I was at the grocery store, and uh, near the end of the, the grocery shopping, I started getting this tingling feeling in my head. And um, I thought that it, it was uncomfortable. I thought, okay, it's nothing. So, paid for the groceries, went home. By the time I got home, it was very uncomfortable. Um, it was so bad, I had to go lay back down in the bed. I mean, so uncomfortable. I had to go lay back down in the bed, and uh, my partner was like, you okay? I said, I have a headache. It's, you know, it's nothing. It'll pass. My partner thought it was odd because I don't get headaches, okay? Well, I'm not kidding you. Within an hour after laying down in my bed, it had developed into the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Um... It was so bad I couldn't hold my eyes open. I took some Tylenol. They did absolutely nothing to help me. Nothing. Uh, my partner went to the pharmacy and got me some goodie powders. I took those, and they made me sick. He said, you've got to go to the ER. This is terrible. You're, you're in the fetal position. You know, go. I said, no, it'll pass. It's just a migraine. You know, leave me alone. But about... <laughs> 10 hours of suffering through this, I finally relented and went to the emergency room. After they called me back, they did an MRI. And um, when they wheeled me out of the room back into the hallway where they'd done the MRI, put me in the hallway, I was in the hospital bed. There were three doctors standing there wearing their white coats. And they, uh, they told me that what was wrong the reason for my headache, I had a brain tumor, um, it was cancerous, and it had ruptured, and I was um, hemorrhaging in my brain. And, uh, it's like, you know, when you hear something like that, your whole world just stops. It's, everything was kind of a blur, everyone around me sounded like the, the teacher from, from, uh, from Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. Um, they wheeled me back to the room and told my partner, and you know, that was here in Winchester, Virginia, near my house at the local hospital. They told me they were going to air vac me to the hospital down in Washington, D.C. They needed to do emergency surgery. So they shot me up with some happy juice, and you know, I don't remember anything for the next four days. Um, but long story short, it began a long process of uh, radiation treatments, which I finished uh, beginning of this year. 
and uh, chemotherapy, which I was taking the f every four Tuesdays for uh, t 12 months. Yesterday, Tuesday, was my last day, and I hadn't been on here in a week because I've been dreading this. It was like I just wanted to get it over with. So yesterday was my final chemo. I had to go Monday morning before... Um, early in the morning to the hospital to get an MRI of my brain made to see what's going on there you know, before they release me from the chemo. Well, when I went to the doctor yesterday before I had the chemo treatment, we discussed the MRI results and they told me that my brain was swollen. Um, there was swelling in my brain at the original tumor site. Um, they told me that they couldn't tell on the MRI if it was uh, ad additional cancer growing or if it was swelling because of scar tissue from the surgery and all the radiation treatments that I had to have they didn't know and they didn't release me from the chemo they they told me that they're going to keep giving it to me um, I have to go back in four more weeks and have another one and uh, they're going to uh, do an MRI a, a very thorough uh, MRI, I, I can't even remember what kind they called it. It's, you know, sometime in December they're going to call me today to schedule that. Um, and then some other kind of test sometime in November. And, I mean, it's it's a lot to digest and process. And I've really been in shock. I'm, I, I was happy that all this was going to be behind me after you know, a 12 month journey and to discover that, you know, it's just longer and more uncertainty. It, it's, you know, it's really a lot to bear, but I want to move on and let's, uh, let's discuss what's going on with the Harkles. Well, why the handbag's relationship with his grandfather, Prince Philip, still hasn't recovered. Oh, by the way, one more note on what I just said. I wasn't telling you all that because I want you to do anything for me or anything like that. It's no, I just wanted to share it with you and what's going on with me. And for all of you who believe in a higher power, uh, you know, please keep me in your thoughts and prayers that everything turns out okay. All right. Thank you. That's it about that. All right. So his grandfather, Prince Philip, still hasn't recovered. It's been a great shock. In the new biography, Prince Philip Revealed. Oh, and I, I ordered this book. I, it's supposed to be delivered tomorrow, so I can't wait to dive into it. Ingrid Seward writes that the Queen's husband has compared Smegs to Wallace Simpson, even though he welcomed her to the family at first. Okay, it's not just the handbag's relationship with the Queen that suffered a setback when he and Smegs decided to exit the royal family. Prince Philip's, want, Prince Philip's once close relationship with his grandson has also not recovered, according to a new biography released this week. Ingrid Seward, author of Prince Philip Revealed, says that the Queen's husband has been unable to comprehend why handbag, sixth in line to the throne, wanted to leave the royal family. Prince Philip has now walked away from the situation after feeling that his advice fell on deaf ears. While he was initially fond of Smegs and made a huge effort to be at the couple's Windsor wedding, despite having undergone a hip operation weeks before, the Duke harbored doubts about Handbag's wife. Seward's book, the first major biography of Philip in over 30 years, reveals that he now compares Smegs to Wallace Simpson, who triggered the abdication crisis when she married the then King Edward VIII in 1937. For Philip, whose entire existence has been based on a devotion to doing his duty, it appeared that his grandson had abdicated for his the sake of his marriage to an American divorcee in much the same way as Edward VIII gave up his crown to marry Wallace Simpson. 
Seward has written more than 12 books on the royal family and spoke to friends, aides, and sources close to the Duke for Prince Philip Revealed. She writes that Philip was deeply upset by Handbag and Smegs' decision to quit the firm and could neither understand nor relate to Harry's decision to leave the royal family. It was also deeply, he was also deeply dismayed by how the couple treated the Queen, making the bombshell announcement about their exit on the 8th of January before consulting Her Majesty, who was in residence at Sandringham. According to Seward's book, the Queen was informed ten minutes before the announcement went live on the website Sussex Royal. She was not amused. <laughs> As Philip was in residence, he was also aware of the announcement and its implications. Speaking to Vanity Fair in an exclusive interview to mark the book's release this week, Seward said, Philip simply cannot understand how Harry has behaved the way he has done. His grandson's behavior is completely alien to him, so not unnaturally the relationship has suffered. Don't forget, this is a man about to turn 100 who has devoted 68 years of his adult life to supporting the monarchy, and this has been a great shock. The Queen would not want him to worry at his age, but Philip's absence from the Sandringham summit spoke volumes. The fact that he was driven away from the big house at Sandringham before everyone even arrived signaled he didn't want to be a part of it. While the Queen is head of state, Philip has always been the head of the family, overseeing the running of the royal country estates and family matters, as Seward points out in her book. Oh my goodness. Okay, there was, there was just uh, one interesting thing in here that I wanted to share with you. Um, it, this article is a bit long. Uh, let me see. Yes, it's about... Uh, here we go. In Prince Philip Revealed, Seward recounts how Harry was dating Smegs at the time, was the guest of honor at a hunting weekend in 2018, but pulled out at the last minute because Smegs didn't want him to slaughter game birds. At exactly 9 a.m., all the guns were waiting at the door to move off, but no sign of handbags, Seward writes. They didn't quite know what to do, so they waited and waited until Harry eventually appeared at the door in his dressing gown, looking very sheepish. His embarrassed explanation was that Smegs did not want him to go out with the uh, things, <laughs> which was extremely awkward as he was guest of honor. So everybody was offended and, of course... You know, something that Harry never should have done. If he was a guest of honor, he should have gone out to be polite. He could have, you know, missed on purpose, right? Anyway, more ridiculousness from the Harkles, right? So, just one quick thing to show you. Uh, Prince Philip says that Smegs is as destructive as Wallace Simpson. Mm-hmm. And this is the foreword of the book. I read through it. Just two things I wanted to point out from it. Uh... Princess Diana uh, said Prince Philip was an amusing dinner companion, but she would never look to him for sympathy or go to him for help as opposed to advice or guidance, which he gave her. But at the end of her life, she declared she hated him. In a conversation I had with her on the subject, she informed me she had warned her sons, William and Handbag, never to shout at anyone who couldn't answer back the way their grandfather did. So... Never have an attitude or yell at anyone who can't yell right back at you. <laughs> and uh, Prince Philip is surprisingly sensitive and has always been appalled by the stream of negative stories in the media about the royal family, his family. But he is always cautioned against suing the press, except in a few instances. He knows it gives more coverage to a libel, plus it is an unpleasant and expensive process to go through. I thought that would be great advice for the Harkles, because when you don't want something out there, the worst thing in the world you can do is raise your hand and say, don't look over here, don't look over here, right? I mean, that just, that's like trying to tell me that a circle fits in a square and 2 plus 2 is 15. I, it makes no sense. And uh, yeah, lawyers are very expensive. So... That was it. You can go on Amazon and check that out if you'd like. But um, like I said, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, please keep me in your thoughts and prayers. And uh, I, I truly do appreciate it. And uh, I'll, I'll try to be back as soon as I can. I'm not saying 
you know, tomorrow I'll wake up and, you know, be in a great mood and feel like dishing the dirt a little bit, spilling the tea, but yeah, I don't see that happening at the moment, but nobody knows what tomorrow holds, how very well I can attest to that. So, um, thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.